On Larry King Now, he's back. Arrow star Stephen Amell. I will have you know that you saying Olicity and my reaction to it are two of my favorite internet memes ever. A Forbes contributor wrote recently that Arrow has jumped the shark this season. I think that there are elements of the show that we could get back to the roots of the show a little bit, but it's an interesting paradox because we started out as one show. Now we are three, maybe four shows within the DC television universe, and it's been Arrow's responsibility in large part to shepherd these shows into existence. He originally, as we said, from Toronto, another huge star claims is his hometown. Do you know Drake? Never met him. He calls himself the Six God. He sure does. What do you make of that? Not much. Plus, secret talent. Uh, I play the mouth trombone. Very good. All next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now, a special guest to return visit with Stephen Amell. You know him as Oliver Queen, also known as the Green Arrow. On the wildly popular CW hit Arrow, that's now in its fourth year, Arrow airs Wednesdays at 8 p.m. 7 central on the big screen. Stephen plays Casey Jones in the upcoming Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows in theaters June 3rd. By the way, we received well over a thousand social media questions for you. That's a new record for us. And we'll wade through some of those later in the show. How do you explain this? I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. I've had a presence on social media since, uh, since we started with the show. And it's just become an incredibly popular and engaged audience. It's loyal. Very, loyal. No, obviously. It's very hard to look at yourself sometimes. Why is Arrow so popular? I don't know. It's a great comic book. It's a great comic book. I've gotten that question a lot with respect to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles as well. I don't know what the I don't know what the secret sauce is. I just know that uh, when we originally came on the air, we were kind of a counterpoint to a lot of the superhero shows that have been on TV, and we tried to go in a different direction, much like Nolan's Batman tried to take the superhero film in a different direction. And for whatever reason, the pilot popped. And here we are, we're 92 episodes in. What's the future of Olicity? Olicity. <laughs> last time you were here, I asked you about it. In Do fact, let, wait, wait, let's take a look at the last time. So what is, what is this Olicity thing? So apparently on the internet now, when there's, I think it started with maybe Benifer, when Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez were together, and then there was, there's Brangelina. So what they, when, they, when they have a couple that they enjoy on a show, you combine the name. So your girlfriend's Felicity? No, my girlfriend's not Felicity. I don't really, <laughs> I, she's not one of my love interests on the show. Are so, you a couple? Not yet. Not that but I the know internet of. has made you a couple? The internet would like us to be a couple. Will, you, will, will the internet force you to do this? I think uh, we really like the, the charm and the charisma that the two of them have together. And, and there's lots to explore there before we'd... Uh, walk down a path of uh, ever having them become a couple just yet, but, um, but we'll see what happens. You never know. We like to surprise the audience, so. Uh, what does the future hold for Olicity? Well, we did walk down the path, and we have since broken up. So, oh. Yeah. But I will have you know that you saying Olicity and my reaction to it are two of my favorite internet memes ever. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The number of times that I've seen you in the past three years say, what is this Olicity thing? Right. <laughs> Numbers in the hundreds. <laughs> Laurel was killed off this year. Like Viewers couldn't hear her dying words. Do you know what they were? I do know what they were, but it's going to remain uh, a secret because much like Greg said, we like to surprise the viewers. Any chance she'll come back from the dead? No. Simply no. no Simply chance. no. A Forbes contributor wrote recently that Arrow has jumped the shark this season. The author claims, uh, he writes, there is no resurrecting a show that's fallen so deeply in love with its own mistakes. It's kind of a twisted vanity. The producers and writers have stopped caring at all about making a vigilante show. I think that there are elements of the show that we could get back to the roots of the show a little bit. But it's an interesting paradox because we started out as one show. When I was here last time, we were one show. 
Now we are three, maybe four shows within the DC television universe, and it's been Arrow's responsibility in large part, especially with The Flash and Legends of Tomorrow, to shepherd these shows into existence. Now they stand on their own and they do their own thing, but we have had to deviate a little bit from the basic elements of our formula, but these are simply problems that exist because we've had an opportunity to do 92 episodes of television. Um, Greg always says, Greg Berlanti always says that people tend to vote with their remotes, and our ratings this year tend to be higher than season one and season two. Uh, this kind of popularity, what about a movie? Well, I'm, I mean, the, it has become easier to take properties on television and turn them into films, but I don't know. Those are things that exist. Well, the guy who played movie. The Flash wasn't cast in the movie, right? No, the right. cinematic universe and the television universe are separate. So you might not be cast if it were a movie? It might not be. Would I that mean, bug you? Um, I've spoken with people within DC and they said that there's no uh, plan to bring the Green, Arrow the Green Arrow character to the cinematic universe, but things change. But How'd you get the part in the first place? I was on an HBO show called Hung. Uh, I played a gigolo. I remember Hung. <laughs> Hung was a wild show. It was a wild show and it got canceled. And my very first audition uh, in pilot season of 2012 was for Greg Berlanti and David Nutter and the team behind Arrow, not even Green Arrow. And I had no idea what it was. But I just went in and read on a Tuesday. And the following Monday, I got cast. Where are you from? Toronto, originally. Oh, yeah, the six. That's what does that I mean? I can't call it the six. What does that mean? Does it, well... I always thought that it meant 416, which is the area code. Yeah. But apparently it might have something to do with six disparate spots that came together sometime in the 90s to make what they called then the mega city. Either it's a great city. It is a great city. Either way, Larry, though, I'm not comfortable calling it the six. Do you know Lake Muskoka? I do. I had a cottage on Lake Muskoka. Well, I go up there every summer. A friend of mine has a cottage. It's a beautiful place. You don't place. have it anymore? No, it's oh. my, my ex. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Our guest is Arrow star Stephen Amell. Coming up, we'll talk about his turn in another very famous franchise, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So stay with us. Before we talk about uh, Ninja Turtles, uh, there's a flip side to the Arrow kind of fandom in that it can go too far. Mm -hmm. You think? I think that there's sections of the fandom that take to liking another character by way of attacking, by liking a certain character by way of attacking another character. All that being said, I think that uh, Twitter largely is overblown. I'm not saying that these people aren't passionate and I'm not saying that their opinion shouldn't matter, but I do think that their voices tend to be so loud that we think that the crowd is much bigger than it actually is. I, I happen to think that it's that it's much smaller, that I think most people still enjoy a show in the traditional way, which is to watch it and not to, not to <laughs> tweet constantly throughout it. But that, that being said, you know, the internet can be a negative place. The reason that I don't consider Twitter to be a very viable social media platform is because there's no accountability. There's no requirement yeah. for anything but anonymity. And... That's not to say that people can't have good opinions there, but I think, I think largely it's noise. What's your relationship with fans in real life? Oh, couldn't be better. And that's why I don't take stuff like Twitter that, that seriously. Because the people that I meet, if they're passionate about the show in a positive or a negative way, they, they, they reason their position out to me in, in a very relaxed, calm way that's much longer than 140 characters. <laughs> and then we can talk about it. I but I think, I think ultimately having passion one way or another about a show is important. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Mm -hmm. How'd you get that part? Uh, You're I, Casey Jones. I'm right? Casey Jones. I met with uh, the director and then I met with Andrew Form and Brad Fuller over at Platinum Dunes, which is, uh, they, they both sort of came out of the Michael Bay school and sat down for a nice meeting and it wasn't really specifically about anything. And then I had been offered a movie that was gonna shoot in Alaska over my last hiatus. And I'd said yes to it because I was offered it and I was very excited. And, um, and it went away because the dates shifted and my availability is so, uh, so limited. I put myself on tape for Casey Jones 
Uh, I was down on the Paramount lot in LA that Friday from Vancouver doing a chemistry read with, with Megan Fox. And then that Monday, I got a call from my agent saying, uh, please expect Michael Bay's call. And next thing you know, got the job. Well, Casey Jones is a vigilante, right? Casey Jones Why do you keep playing vigilantes? You know, I don't know. It's better that when I first started out as an actor, I played a bunch of murderers. So, <laughs> so, so uh, I don't know why I keep playing vigilantes. I I'll tell you, the, it does on paper sound like a very similar character to Oliver Queen, but having played both of them, I don't think that there's a lot of one and the other. Okay, Casey has a love connection, right, with April O'Neil in the movie? They have, a, they, they have a spark, yes. What's she like to work with? She's great. She's yeah. great. I'd never done a big feature film before, so she's done a bunch of them. So, you know, there are things that I didn't know what to expect, and it was What's nice. the difference? It's a camera? It's a you know, the cameras, ultimately, you just end up having more time. But I didn't know what the differences were going to be, and she has a lot of experience acting with CGI. Because when we're acting with the turtles, if they're in the scenes, it's guys wearing CGI suits, and they're like nine feet tall, so when you look at them in the eye, you have to look up here, which is not what my parents taught me to do, Larry. So it's like I had to, you had to really, really focus. Why, uh, why are they so popular? I don't know. I mean, I, I think- Were you a fan as a kid? I was a fan as a kid. The, the other live action films came out in, in, I think, 90, 91, 92 range, and so I would go and see them, and then my buddies and I would have pizza parties. All right, you told me the last time you were here, you did your own stunts yes. on Arrow. Mm -hmm. What about a ninja? All of them. They let Why? me do. Don't I, they have insurance for things like that? They do have insurance for stuff like that. And of course, there, there was one There was one ratchet shot that they wouldn't allow me to do. But um, I didn't know on the feature if they were going to be more protective of me or less protective. And the directors and the, the stunt coordinators, once they found out that I was interested in doing stuff, they let me do all of it. I've always been of the opinion that even if I can do a stunt 60% as well as a stunt guy, the fact that they can photograph my face while they're doing it and the fact that as an actor I can put intention behind it is going to make it resonate more with the people watching the movie. What's the toughest one you did? I had to slam into a door repeatedly on rollerblades and it just hurt. There was just no, there's no good way to slam into a door. So you sort of like pain. I don't. I don't. I like complaining about it at the end of the day, as my wife can attest to, but no, I don't like pain. You went to WonderCon. Mm -hmm. How does that compare with Comic-Con? I went to Comic-Con, which is insane. Calling Comic-Con a, you know, a, a Comic-Con is like calling the Super Bowl a football game. Sure, a football game happens, but they're so outsized now. You know, I go to some, some really cool Comic-Cons in spots like Kansas City or Denver and... Uh, WonderCon and San Diego Comic-Con and New York Comic-Con have just turned into these big... Where is WonderCon? WonderCon was in Anaheim and it's now in Los Angeles. And it's wilder as... It's, it was actually a little bit quieter this year, but they, they turn into huge things and studios now use them to debut movies and it was the first sort of spot that we debuted footage for Turtles. They debuted uh, one of my fight scenes as Casey Jones, actually, so it's pretty mm. cool. What was Steven's childhood celebrity crush? We'll find out after the break. Plus, we'll talk to this famous Canadian about some other famous Canucks. We'll be right back. We're back with Steven Amell. He stars as Casey Jones in the upcoming Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows. It's in theaters June 3rd. He originally, as we said, from Toronto. Another huge star claims is his hometown. Do you know Drake? Never met him. But I hear you were both on the show Degrassi. I was, but he was he was uh, a star on Degrassi for several years, and I played a bouncer in one scene in one episode. <laughs> he calls himself the Six God. He sure does. What do you make of that? Not much. <laughs> you don't like the Six. No, I like you know I like Drake, and I and I like I like his I like his music. <laughs> my buddy and I have a theory about Drake. Uh, my buddy Drew and I, who I who I went to business with. And our theory is that Drake just tries things, whether it be calling himself the Six God or rapping about fighting with a girl at Cheesecake Factory or whatever the case may be. He just does stuff, fashion, whatever, and he just says to his buddies, look at what I'm going to try. So look he at, like reinvents himself. I wouldn't say reinvents himself. I say sees what he can get away with. 
But clearly, he's very talented. I mean, he's, he's prolific. He produces a lot of music. Yeah. Good for him. Your new prime minister, Justin Trudeau, mm -hmm. he's a big celebrity in the United States, as was his father. Yes. You like him? I do. Uh, I, I, I mean, I, I think that politics obviously is, has become also very outsized, but he seemed to be a pretty honest guy with what he was going to do. And, uh, you know, just outside of politics, I think that it's neat that people think that Canada has a cool prime minister. As an, uh, you're a Canadian citizen, right? I am. I, I have my, I'm a permanent resident here now, which is exciting. What do you think of our election? I think it's, I think it's some of the best television that we're going to see all year. <laughs> I, no, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of incredible. I mean, forgetting about politics for this, for a second, I was, I was, I was listening to you guys talk earlier and I think it's actually quite phenomenal that Trump was able to put aside, what, 16 candidates yeah, in the 16. GOP? Whatever you think about him, whatever he's doing is clearly resonating with people. The Trump-Clinton debates will be on pay-per-view. They should be on pay-per-view. <laughs> okay, we play a little game of If You Only Knew. I throw some questions at you, just sure. celebrity childhood crush. Sloan from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Guilty pleasure. Uh, salt and vinegar chips. You do like them? I love them. I like salt, but okay. Favorite song to sing in the shower? That love and feeling. Secret talent? Uh, I play the mouth trombone. Very good. Thank you. What other superhero would you like to play? Oh boy. Can it be a villain? Yeah. The Riddler. Oh, I like the Riddler. I do too. What superhero would you like to make a cameo on Arrow? Batman. Best compliment you ever got? Laura Linney complimented me after a scene in Turtles, and I'm a huge admirer of her work. And it was a pretty outsized scene for me, and I felt like I was on a bit of a on the on a ledge a little bit. And her affirmation was um, very touching. If you weren't an actor, what would you be? Stay-at-home dad. Most embarrassing moment. I usually have to do a fight scene on Arrow every year in a suit, and I almost always rip my pants front to back. <laughs> if you could have a superpower, what would it be? Flying. What's something you do possess that you consider your greatest power? That's a I good think the trombone bit. Is the trombone bit? <laughs> I'll, I'll noodle that one for a second, but I think the trombone's pretty good. <laughs> what do Americans get wrong about Canada? It's not cold all the time. <laughs> oh, and health care's not free up there. We pay for it in taxes. What do Canadians get wrong about America? Oh boy. Uh, I happen to think that their opinions on Texas are a little bit uh, pigeonholed. On Texas? Yeah. Something you believe to be true but realize it isn't? I'm always going to be able to jump as high as I could when I was in high school. <laughs> and tell me something people don't know about you. Something people don't know about me. I feel like I'm a pretty forthcoming person. I'm a feng shui enthusiast. A what? A feng shui enthusiast. Like right now I want to take your pen and turn it back that way a little bit. And I have to fight it all the time. Feng shui? What does like, that mean? I feel like I'm becoming a little bit... Uh, as I work more and more, I find that I'm becoming a more and more particular person. And I think that I'm getting a little idiosyncratic elements to my personality that are bordering on OCD. Yeah, I like my pills lined up, you know, when I take, like, vitamins or prescriptions. If they're not lined up perfectly, they don't work. That's correct. That's so right. when I saw, <laughs> saw this pen going that way, you wanted it to go that way. Something like that. But I would never, I would never touch your pen without your permission. But you did. I did. Stephen is answering <laughs> some of the many social media questions we got in our final segment. Don't go away. Here they come. Okay, Stephen, we got many social media questions. Mm -hmm. By the way, uh, Teenage Mutant uh, Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows opens June 3rd. A big screen. Very exciting. Okay. I haven't seen it yet. Okay, we have many social media questions. This is only a 30 minute show, so here it is. <laughs> okay. Cable Olicity via Twitter. Three words that describe the season finale. Where'd everybody go? At Coyote Punch Twitter, Oliver's currently the rock of the team. How is he handling that emotionally? 
internally. At Cali G1695 via Twitter, did you expect that Oliver and Felicity would become one of the most popular couples on television? Never in a million years. At Honey Buns Token via Twitter, what was it like filming with the turtles not actually being turtles? You felt pretty stupid because not only did you have to do it with the turtles, but occasionally you had to shoot a scene where nobody was there once you set whatever the blocking was and the camera movements were. So you really had to trust that they were going to... And you haven't seen the finished version. Mm -mm. And you love her 88 via our blog. Are you a team cap or are you a team Iron Man? Iron Man. I have no idea what I'm asking now. You know that Iron Man versus Captain America Civil War? Oh, oh that's all oh, that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ralph, <laughs> Ralph, I'm so old. Ralph Montez on our blog writes, four different superhero shows and now Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. What got you to start making wine? My buddy and I took a, took a trip to Paso Robles while we were waiting to see if the Arrow uh, uh, pilot was going to get picked up to series. And we had an amazing time tasting wine. And I turned to him and I said, how do we do this all the time? Luckily for me, he's an entrepreneur who grew up in Walla Walla, Washington. And now we have a burgeoning wine business. What's the name of the wine? Knocking Point with no K. Knocking Point with no K. Knocking Point with no all K. All kinds? We have eight different varietals. We have a wine club. We have a goods club. Uh, we're thinking about doing some uh, bespoke celebrity wines with friends of ours. And uh, it's, I'll, I'll tell you, it's, it's the most exciting thing that I've ever done. And I get to do some pretty cool things because it's something that we created. How's your Cabernet? Very good. It's called Wicked Aim. At Flower City, what's your favorite scene playing Casey Jones? I get to destroy a bar. And it's actually a very famous bar. They filmed The Godfather 2 part there, uh, in, in, in that bar, which I found out after the fact. And uh, wow. I get to do some really cool things in a bar that I would never do in real life. At Always Bet via Twitter, how has your relationship with Emily Bet Rickards developed over the years? She plays Felicity. Uh, we're best of friends now. As I am with almost everyone on the cast, we spend far too much time together. At Lala161 via Twitter, did you see yourself becoming more of a big screen actor in the future, or do you prefer the small screen? I really enjoyed doing a movie because it reminded me actually of the pilot of Arrow where we had time to prep, time to shoot, and you know, time to make sure that we got everything right. So I did enjoy the, I did enjoy the process of making a feature film. I could see myself hopefully doing more of those in the future. At Jenny the Joker via Twitter, what does your workout consist of to maintain your physique for being the Green Arrow? Depends on the type of year, time of year it is. Right now I'm just going for runs and swimming. But I'll do weight training and yoga and all sorts of different things. I mix it up. And finally, hundreds of fans want to know about the future of Olicity. Anything else you can tell us? No. <laughs> Although I hope that if I get a chance to come back three years so now I get to hear you say Olicity again. You'll be back. Thank you very much. Larry. Olicity. <laughs> Thanks to my guest, Stephen Amell. You can catch up on the fourth season of Arrow on the CW and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows in theaters June 3rd. Check out the Larry King Now blog for another social media segment with Stephen. He's answering even more of your questions. As always, you can find me on Twitter on King's Things. And we'll see you next time.